Hi, welcome to Breaking the Panels. My name's Ashley, and today I'm going to take you guys back to a galaxy far, far away, or well, to 2015, and to Star Wars The Force Awakens. At the time, this was the first Star Wars movie that we had in 10 years, the last of which being Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. Star Wars The Force Awakens is directed by J.J. Abrahams and stars Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Oscar Isaacs. They are joined by veteran Star Wars actors Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill and the late great Carrie Fisher. This movie was so highly anticipated. I remember watching the teaser trailer for this a year before the actual release date of this movie. Do you guys remember that? There has been an awakening. Have you felt it? I absolutely loved this movie. This was the first Star Wars movie since Disney bought the rights from Lucasfilm. And it was fantastic. The new characters that were introduced in this film were perfect and they are so beloved. <laughs> This film introduced some really memorable and beloved characters. Rey, Finn, Poe Dameron, they are so beloved and we're only one film in. And they were of course tempered with some brilliant villains like General Hux, the shadowy and mysterious Snoke, and my favourite character, Kylo Ren. I loved Kylo Ren. He isn't quite the finished article just yet and his lightsaber looks like he's cobbled it together from pieces of artifacts that he's discovered throughout the galaxy. He isn't the finished article and that's reflected in his lightsaber. It's perfect and that fight scene at the end, well, it truly comes into effect with the hill. The plot of this film sees these new characters mingling with veteran characters from the past trilogies. A new empire has risen from the ashes of the old one, known as the First Order, and they have one mission, domination over the whole galaxy. But to do so, they need to extinguish one final light in the galaxy, Luke Skywalker. They are after Luke Skywalker, and Leia Organa already knows about this, and she sends her top pilot, Poe Dameron, to find the coordinates of her long lost brother. Dark side. And the light. One thing that I was really disappointed about was Captain Phasma. I thought she looked absolutely sensational in the products that were released prior to this movie. She was on the front cover of a magazine and I bought it. She looked absolutely fantastic, but unfortunately she wasn't used very well. She had a few lines here and there but she was disposed of way too quickly. Of course, they've made amends with her own comic book series that has just been released and released in trade paperback, a new novel as well. In these books, we find out more about her backstory and history, and even some of her relationships with the characters that we saw in The Force Awakens that didn't get quite flushed out in the film. I can't wait to see what Captain Phasma does next in The Last Jedi. This movie asks a lot of questions that we don't even have the answers to to this very day. For example, Rey and her lineage. Who are her parents? What is she doing on Jakku? Who is she waiting for? There have been a lot of rumours circulating online about her being a Skywalker, being a Kenobi, even being a Palpatine. Who knows? And the planet itself, Jakku. What importance does this planet play? It's been featured heavily in a lot of Star Wars canon. Another question asked in this movie is Kylo Ren himself. We know who he's related to, but how is he linked to Snoke or to the Knights of Ren? And was he truly the reason why Luke Skywalker disappeared? Did he really destroy the Jedi school that Luke had started? Who knows? But this is a really interesting character and I can't wait for some answers. And hopefully we get them in The Last Jedi. One thing that I love most about this film is the First Order itself. They're obviously fanatics and they're fanatical about the Empire. 
They take certain aspects of the Empire and make it better. Their own First Order spin, like the TIE Fighters. First of all they were grey, now they're black and they're more sleek. And the Imperial Star Destroyer, with the turret on top, they've got rid of that, they're more sleek and more deadlier than ever. Now, one bad thing about this, of course, is the Starkiller base. It's kind of based a little bit on the Death Star, and I think a lot of fans felt that this was an idea that was being recycled. And of course, no Star Wars movie will be complete without John Williams. The great man himself has returned and has created a truly memorable soundtrack and score. This score is beautiful. He blends elements of the old and creates the new. It is perfect, and I can't wait to hear what he does next with The Last Jedi. The contrast between these two movies are going to be really interesting, as The Force Awakens is quite bright and light and optimistic, and I have a feeling that The Last Jedi is going to be a lot more darker and grim, and I can't wait for the soundtracks to complement each other, the brightness of The Force Awakens and the darkness of The Last Jedi. I am so thrilled to see John Williams back. He is an integral part of the Star Wars franchise, and he really does layer and create a nice continuity between all the films from the original trilogy back in the 70s and the prequel era in the early and mid 2000s. Since Disney acquired the rights to Lucasfilm, Star Wars is well and truly back. We have The Force Awakens, we have Rogue One and we have The Last Jedi coming. We even have brand new comics, games and novels also coming out. Poe Dameron has an ongoing series, so does Darth Vader and Battlefront 2 is just about to be released here in the UK. I think they've already got it in the USA and it's already being hailed as a success thanks to the campaign that is now officially canon. I can't wait to see what happens next with the Star Wars franchise and I'm so grateful for everyone putting in their hard work and effort into bringing Star Wars back. It truly is a wonderful time to be a Star Wars fan. What's your favourite Star Wars film? Please comment below. Also remember to like and subscribe. You can find us all over social media at Breaking the Panels.